Okay, so this is the principles of research course. In this course, I will teach you how to write one organized thought out research papers. So to do this, you have to be acquainted with the different techniques of writing a research paper, such as quoting, introducing your quotes, documenting your quotes, and writing a list of references at the end of your research. Okay, so in this course, I will teach you two style sheets that are used in English studies. A style sheet is a format that you have to use to document your sources. Now, in English studies, we use the MLA, MLA style sheet and the APA style sheet. MLA stands for Modern Language Association. Okay, MLA means Modern Language Association. And we use it mainly in literature courses. So therefore, literature students should master, should learn the MLA style sheet, and they should, they should use this style sheet when they write their research papers. The language students are required to master the APA format. APA stands for American Psychological Association. Okay. APA means American Psychological Association. It is required of language students. Okay. So in this course, you will be taught how to choose a topic for research. Okay. So you may come up with a subject. So you have, first of all, to choose a subject. So you may say, I want to write a research paper on Shakespeare. Okay? So this is very broad. So saying that you want to write on Shakespeare is not enough. So I ask you, are you going to write on Shakespeare the poet? Or Shakespeare, the playwright. So in this case, you start to narrow down your subject. Okay? So you say, are you right on Shakespeare, the playwright? Then I say, are you going to write on Shakespeare's tragedies or comedies? So you have to choose either the comedies or the tragedies. You say that you will write on those tragedies. I say you have to narrow it down a little bit more. So you have to choose a play, one of the tragedies of Shakespeare, or a theme that is related to Shakespeare's tragedies. So you may say, I want to write on Macbeth. And in this case, you may choose Macbeth as a ruler, Macbeth as a tragic hero. Okay, so these are two possible topics. So this is how you have to choose a topic for a research paper. Okay, so you have to choose a subject, 
then you narrow down the subject to a specific topic. Okay? So this is how you have to choose a topic for a research paper. After you choose a topic for your research paper, you have to decide on your methodology. Okay, the methodology is the critical approach that you have to draw on as you conduct your research. Okay, so methodology here is a an approach to research. Now, if you are writing research on literature, you have to choose a critical theory. Okay, now in the Shakespeare course, you came across different approaches to the plays of Shakespeare. Stop this noise, please. In the Shakespeare course, you have come across different approaches to the tragedies of Shakespeare. Okay, one of these approaches is Freud's theory of psychoanalysis. So this is a methodology. Okay, so this is what we mean by methodology. So a methodology is a critical theory that you apply to a certain work of literature. Okay, now in linguistics, you have your own methods of doing research. You have the quantitative method, you have the qualitative method, you have the mixed method. I'm not going to discuss these methods, it is not within the scope of the course. You will study these approaches next semester. Okay, so we have to decide on a certain approach that is appropriate to the research that you are doing. Okay, then you have to analyze the topic that you are going to deal with. Okay, so when you write your research paper, you have to start with a title. The research paper should have a title. Even the essay that you write should have a title. And the title of your essay or your research paper should be related to the content of your paper, i.e. it should be related to what you're going to discuss. For example, a title like Hamlet is not a title. Yes. So almost all of you on the Shakespeare exam used the following titles Macbeth, Othello, King Lear. These are not titles. These are the titles that Shakespeare chose for his plays. But these are not titles for well organized, thought out critical papers. So the title of your paper should reflect the content of your paper. So you may choose the following title, for example. Uh, Macbeth as a ruler. So this is a topic. But when you write Macbeth and you write, you discuss the theme of the ruler in the play, this means that the title doesn't reflect the content. Okay, so in addition to choosing a good title, you have to write a good introduction. The introduction should introduce the topic. After the introduction, you have to write your methodology. So the methodology comes 
directly after the introduction. It cannot be buried in the body of your research paper. Okay, it's clear. Then after you present the methodology, you have to present your analysis of the topic. And at the end, you have to write a conclusion. And the conclusion in this case should summarize the main points of your research paper. Okay? okay. Now, when you write a research paper, you have to use primary and secondary sources. Okay? A primary source is the subject of your study. Okay? So in this case, Hamlet is a primary source. Macbeth is a primary source. So if you want to write on Macbeth, this means that Macbeth is your primary source. And the sources or the articles or books that are written in Macbeth are considered secondary sources. So the secondary sources that you read, that you use when you write a research paper will help you understand the subject better. They help you support your own argument, your own analysis. So you have to use both primary and secondary sources when you write a research paper. Okay? And as you write your research paper, you have to introduce your quotes. Okay? So you can't write a quote without introducing it. For example, if you want to quote Macbeth, you have to say Macbeth says, comma, then you write his statement within quotation marks. This is how you introduce your quote. Macbeth says, comma, then you write the statement that you want to quote within quotation marks. At the end of the quote, you write Let's say the page, okay, in the case of Macbeth, you have to write uh, the number of the act, the number of the scene, and the number of the line that you have quoted, okay, because this is a play. Now, if you are quoting a novel or a poem, you have to mention the number of the page within parentheses, okay? So this is how you introduce and document your quotes. At the end of your research paper, you have to write a list of works cited. Okay? So you write a list of works cited if you are a literature student. Okay? So literature students should compile a list of works cited, cited C-I-T-E-D, at that. So they have to Write a list of works cited on a separate sheet of paper. Language students should write a list of references. Okay? So, literature students start a new page, they give it the title Works Cited. Language students start a new page and they give it the title references and they have to list their references according to the family names of the authors we will discuss these issues in detail later on so this is what we mean by writing a well organized thought out well documented research paper okay so when you write a research paper you have to avoid plagiarism okay so 
if you do regenerize, it means that you are not presenting your own ideas and your own analyses. And the result of plagiarism will be a zero. Okay, so if a student plagiarizes his or her research paper, he or she will get a failing grade. Please, can you repeat this point, please? Plagiarism? Yes. Plagiarism means that you take a research paper written by someone and you present it as if it were your own work. Okay? So you may go online, you choose an article or an essay, and you turn it in as your own essay. Or you may take paragraphs as they are from different articles, you put them together into your research, and you claim that it is your own product. This is another example of plagiarism. Therefore, whenever you use a secondary source in your research, you have to admit that you are quoting a certain authority, i.e. you are quoting a certain person. Okay? So if you are quoting, let's say, L.C. Knights, you have to introduce the name of L.C. Knights, and you have to introduce his statement, and you have to enclose it, enclose it, i.e. write it, within quotation marks, and you have to mention the number of the page on which the quote appears, or from which the quote is taken. Okay? So this is how you avoid plagiarizing your research paper. Is it clear now? Okay, before we start working on how to write a research paper, we have to take some preliminary steps. The first thing that we have to do is to know how to write a well-organized, thought-out essay. You may say that you have studied this before. I know you have studied this before. But I want to make sure that you follow my own guidelines when you write your own essay. So in this course, I will teach you how to write one form of essay, which is an academic essay. And writing an academic essay has its own techniques and skills. Okay, so after we are done with how to write an essay, which is a process that includes how to write an introduction, a body, and a conclusion, I will introduce two or three different points of view that we draw on when we write uh, an essay. Okay, so we have what we call the uh, subjective point of view, we have the objective point of view, and we have the you point of view. And I will discuss these three points of view, and I will show you which one you have to use in my class, at least in my classes. It's up to you to choose whatever you want in other classes, but in my classes, especially in this one, you have to follow the format that I will introduce in this course. Okay? Then I will give you a student essay to consider. Okay? Now, the student essay that you have to read is available in the book, and I expect you to have bought the book from the Copy Center, from the University Copy Center. The book is available. Uh, everything is available in that book except 
the poems because every year I change the poems that we teach. Okay, so this year I will send you the, the poems. Is it that, change it? The poems. Yes, I changed some of the poems. Okay, I will send you the poems by WhatsApp. So you may download these poems. They are available online. Okay? okay. So we will, the first step is to know how to write a well-organized, thought-out, academic essay. The second step is to know which point of view you have to draw on when you write your essay. Then we will study a poem by Sylvia Plath. It is Daddy. And I sent you the uh, syllabus to the group yesterday. So you may have checked the syllabus. Okay? So we will discuss Sylvia Plath's Daddy from a feminist point of view. Then we will discuss how to write a summary. Okay, I will discuss how to write a summary. Okay, and writing a summary is completely different from the way that you used to write a summary at school. When you write a summary, you have to summarize maybe an article or a paragraph or a chapter or a book using your own language to summarize doesn't mean that you have to take sentences as they are from the text that you are going to summarize this is not summarizing okay so when you summarize you have to read to understand to identify the main ideas, the main supporting details, then you have to restate these main ideas and main supporting details in your own words. You need to know how to write a summary because when you write a research paper, you may need to summarize a long paragraph. Okay? So sometimes you may have a very long paragraph and you can't quote all of it. So you read it and you summarize the main points of that paragraph. So that's why you need to know how to summarize. When you write your MA thesis or your PhD dissertation, you may need to summarize. When you write an abstract, you have to summarize. When you write a proposal, you have also to use the technique of summarizing large chunks of information. And you will be acquainted with how to paraphrase. So after we are done with all of these preliminary steps, we will start discussing how to write a research paper. Okay, so in this chapter, it is a very long chapter in the book, we learn about how to choose a topic, how to write a research paper, how to introduce our quotes, how to analyze our quotes, how to incorporate the quotes into our papers, how to write bibliography notes. Then we will study another poem by Sylvia Plath. It is entitled Perga. Okay, we will also read Miriam Moore's In Distrust of Merits. Okay, we will also learn about how to write in text citation, i.e., how to document your sources within the essay. And I will teach you how to write a bibliography note at that. Okay, for example, you studied Macbeth. It is a play written by William Shakespeare. Okay? Now, usually on the exam, I ask the students to write 
bibliography notes for different sources. So I give them the information. They have to change the information into bibliography notes. For example, I say Macbeth is a play written by William Shakespeare. It was published by Longman in London in 1982. Okay. So to write a bibliography note for this source, okay, so Macbeth is a source, i.e. it is a book. You have to do the following. You start with the, the author. So you write Shakespeare, comma, William, period. Okay, so you start with the name of the author. Now, if you are a literature Can student, you start with the family name of the author, followed by a comma. The comma is followed by the first name of the author. So here you write Shakespeare, comma, William, period. Okay, now if you are literature students, after the name of the author, you write the title of the source. The title is Macbeth. And you have to underline it because it is the title of a book. Okay? What do we have to do? Underline Macbeth? Or Under, of course, Macbeth is the title of a book. Uh, what do we do? We underline it that we underline Macbeth? What? You said we write the title of the source, Macbeth, and then we underline it, or what? Are you, can you hear me? No, yes. Okay. I said you start with the family name of the writer. So in this case, you start with Shakespeare, comma, William, period. Then you write the title of the book. Here it is Macbeth. You write Macbeth and you underline it. Or you italicize it if you are typing on the computer. Okay, Macbeth, period. Then you write that London. London is the place of the publication of the book. London, then colon, after the colon you write Longman. Longman is the publisher. Longman is the publisher. After Longman you have a comma, then 1980, which is the date of the publication of the book. So you start with the name of the author, period. After the name of the author, you mention the title of the book. Again, it should be underlined, period. After the title, you mention the place of the publication of the book. Here you have London. After London, you have a colon. Then you have Longman. Longman is the publisher. Then comma. Then 1980. This is the date of the publication of the book. So this is how you write a bibliography note. Now, if you are a language student, you have to write the date of the publication of the book after the name of the author. This is the only difference. So you write Shakespeare, I'm addressing those who are language students. You write Shakespeare, comma, capital W, you don't need to write William, you write the initial of the first name. You write W, period, 
Then within parentheses, you write 1980. This is the date of the publication of the book. Period. Then you write Macbeth, London, London. Okay, so this is the only difference between the APA and the MLA style sheet. Okay, so this is how you write a bibliography. So we write after the big uh, capital W uh, the name of the publisher right away. I said publisher, I said the date of the publication of the book. I said you write Shakespeare, comma, capital W period. Within parentheses, you write 1980, period, then Macbeth, underline, period, then London, colon, then Longman, period. You mean we don't write William, we just write W, the capital letter of... He said you write, yes, the initial of the first name, i.e. you write capital W, according to the APA. Okay? According to the APA, you write the family name of the author, followed by a comma, followed by the... Initial of the first thing, initial any other half of the What did you say? I didn't hear you. You have a Uh, doctor, yes. Um, if we are linguistic students, we write and the APA, and if yes. we are students, we write uh, like the first one, or we all write like uh, literature. Are you language or literature student? I'm language. Language. You have to follow the APA story sheet. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes? Your voice is not clear at all. Okay, so you will have to know how to write a bibliography note. Okay, so in this case, we come to the end of writing a research paper. After we are done with the research paper, we will study how to write a proposal. Okay, a proposal is a plan of study. What does it mean? So when you want to do your MA or your PhD, you have to choose a topic for your thesis. Okay? So when you choose a topic, you have to write a proposal. The proposal is a detailed plan of how you are going to do your MA thesis. In other words, it introduces the topic in two or three pages. It introduces the methodology that you will draw on as you write your thesis. It will present a review of the literature that has been written on a certain topic. Okay, so if you want to write on Macbeth, you have to review all the studies that have been written on Macbeth. And you have to present them briefly to show your readers that your topic is a new topic. It is original. So this is the meaning of original when you do research. So when I say your topic is original, 
I mean to say that your topic is new. I mean, no one has discussed this topic before. Okay? So you have, I will teach you how to write a proposal. Then we will study poems by Emily Dickinson. We may have one, two, three, maybe four poems by Emily Dickinson. Then we will study the rhetorical triangle and we will apply it to Wilfred Owens, Dulce et Decorum Est. And then we will read Matthew Arnold's Dover Beach and Kathy Song's Lost Sister and Heaven. So this is your course. Do you have any questions? Okay, the poems that we are going to discuss in this course are required for the final exam. You have to study them. Because on the final exam, I will give you a poem and I will give you a topic related to the poem. And you have to write a well-organized research paper on that topic. In other words, you have to write an essay, a well-organized, thought-out essay on that topic, but you have also, you have also to quote the poem that you have on the exam, and you have to document your quotes Okay, so if you don't quote on the exam, if you don't introduce your quotes properly, if you don't uh, document your quotes properly, if you don't set a bibliography note at the end of your essay, you will not pass the course, even if you write a perfect answer. The course is entitled Principles of Research. Therefore, the principles of research that are introduced in this course should be employed, should be used by you when you write the final exam. Is it clear? Sorry for yes, it's clear. Okay, on the final exam. You will have a poem and you will have a topic related to that poem. So you will have to discuss the topic with reference to the poem and you will have to quote that poem. I.e. you have to take lines from that poem, maybe stanzas, to support your own analysis. Or you may quote and analyze your quotes. And in this case, all the research skills that I will introduce throughout the semester should be employed by all of you. So some student in the past used to write an essay on the topic without quoting, without introducing their quotes, without documenting their quotes. They didn't pass. I will not give you a passing grade even if the essay is perfect. So you have to master. Excuse me, doctor. Yes. What do you mean by documenting your quotes? I said you take a quote from the poem, from the poem that you have for the final exam, you introduce the quote, you write the quote within quotation marks, at the end of the quote, you have to mention the page number. If you are a literature student, if you are a language student, you have to mention the date of the publication of the text, followed by P, i.e. page, then the number of the page, and you have to write it within parentheses. And at the end, you have to write a bibliography note. Now, some students introduce, or they insert, lines into the research paper without introducing them 
without documenting them. No, this is not a research paper. Okay? So if you don't use the research techniques that you will come across in this course, you will not pass the course. Uh, language students should write date of publication, then what? Come what? We will discuss these issues later on. You don't have to worry about it. I'm just giving you an example. We will okay. discuss it in detail. And you have samples in the book. Okay, thank you. Okay. So if you don't quote, if you don't use the research techniques that you come across in this course, you will not pass the exam. Okay? So this is completely different from the Shakespeare exam. Okay? So in the Shakespeare exam, I don't uh, grade your research skills because I don't ask you to write a research. Okay? And the course is not entitled Principles of Research. So you have a topic in the Shakespeare course, you write an essay on the topic period. So in this course, it is completely different. Do you have any question? Doctor, sorry okay. for interrupting. Can you repeat what you just said? I said the essay that you write in this course is completely different from the essay that you write in the Shakespeare course. On the Shakespeare exam, you have a topic, and you are supposed to discuss the topic in an essay. So you don't need to quote and to document your quotes. But in this course, you have to use all the research techniques that you will come across in this course. OK, now since we have enough time, I will introduce how to write an essay. Okay, so this is your first chapter. You have to take notes because this chapter is not available in the book. But I think I have notes. I will send them to you by WhatsApp. But you have to take notes. Okay? Now, how to write an academic essay? Okay? An academic essay is made up of an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. Okay, so these are the main elements of the essay. Okay, so any essay should have an introduction, a body, and a conclusion, okay, in addition to the title. There is no essay without a title, okay? So when you write your final draft, you have to supply a title for your essay or research paper. Okay, now, you may have been told that there are different types of introduction. What are they, since you have taken academic writing before? What are the different types of introduction that you have come across in that course? Can you tell me? Funnel. Okay. Any introduction. Okay. Historical introduction, general statistics. Okay, one, 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 I want one. Anecdote. Can I? Okay, go on. Historical introduction, general to specific. Um, Anecdote. Okay. Quotation. Mm -hmm. 
Definition. Question. question. Okay. Now, in this academic essay, you have to write an introduction that proceeds from the general to the specific. Okay? So, in a research paper or in an essay that you write for this course, I don't expect you to start your introduction with, let's say, an anecdote or with a proverb or with a set of questions. In academic English, the student is supposed to start with general ideas related to his or her topic. Then we should narrow down these general ideas to a thesis statement. Okay, so this is what we call the funnel approach. This is what we call the funnel approach. Okay, so the introduction is compared to a funnel simply because the funnel is too broad at the top and very narrow at the bottom. So this means that the first sentence of your introduction is very broad. You narrow down this broad sentence to a more specific sentence. So the second sentence of the introduction is more specific than the first. Okay? Then you narrow down the second sentence to a third sentence. And you narrow down the third sentence to a fourth until you come down to the thesis statement. The thesis statement is the most specific sentence of the introduction. Okay? So the thesis statement expresses the topic that you're going to discuss in your essay. Okay? So this is the main idea. The theme of your essay. Okay, so the thesis statement is made up of a topic and controlling ideas, right? Okay, so the topic is the main idea, and the controlling ideas are the ideas that you have to present in your body to explain the topic, to elaborate on the topic. Okay, now for example, I may ask you to write an essay on an or a person who is ideal for you. Okay, so this is the topic. The ideal person is the topic. So you may say that my sister is my ideal person. So this part of the thesis statement includes the topic. My sister is my ideal person, so this is the topic, the ideal person, because she is, okay, and here you have to introduce the controlling ideas, let's say because she is intelligent, Let's say loyal and 
and hard working. Okay, so these are the controlling ideas of your thesis statement. Okay, so you have a thesis statement made up of a topic and three controlling ideas. Okay, hold on for a second. I have a, an urgent call. Wait a minute. Okay, back to you. Okay, so here we have a thesis statement that includes a topic which is my system is my ideal person and three controlling ideas. Okay, these are intelligent, loyal, hardworking okay so this is the thesis statement so the thesis statement may i i'm saying may i'm not saying should or must may provide a plan for organization okay so when you read this thesis statement you realize that you have a plan for organization. I said, because she is intelligent, loyal, hardworking. Therefore, when you read this thesis statement, you realize that I will discuss three qualities that make my sister my ideal person. So these three qualities are her intelligence, her loyalty, and the fact that she is hardworking. So this is what we call a plan for organization. Okay, so I organize my essay, my paragraphs, i.e. my body paragraphs according to this thesis statement okay so it means that my first developmental paragraph or body paragraph should deal with my sister's intelligence so if you have written the sentence down i mentioned intelligent first then loyal then hard working Okay, so when I write the essay, okay, when I write the essay, I have to proceed according to this order. So my first para uh, body paragraph should deal with my sister's intelligence. My second paragraph should deal with her loyalty. And the third paragraph that should deal with her, with the fact that she is a hard working person. So this is what we mean by 
plan for organization. So the thesis statement may or may not. Okay? The thesis statement may or may not provide a plan for organization. So this is not necessary. Okay? So the plan for organization is not necessary. Now in this essay, it is necessary. So it is not enough to say, my sister is my ideal person. Okay? So this is the thesis statement. So it tells your reader what he expects to read about in the essay. Is it clear? Yes, Dr. Clear. Okay. Yes, clear enough. Okay, now the thesis statement shouldn't be a question. You can't say, why is my sister my ideal person? This is not a thesis statement. Do you know why? A thesis statement is called a statement. And a statement couldn't be a question. So that's why you cannot state your thesis statement as a question. So if I ask you to write an essay on the causes of emigration from Lebanon, you can't write your thesis statement as follows. What are the causes of emigration from Lebanon? What are the causes of air pollution? So this is not a thesis statement. <coughs> okay? Instead, you can say, emigration from Lebanon is caused by wars, unemployment, Okay, so these are two causes of emigration from Lebanon. So this is how you write a thesis statement. Okay, so we can say emigration from Lebanon is caused by wars, unemployment, and maybe poverty. Okay, so this is how you write a thesis statement. Is it clear? Yes, Doc. Okay, now yes. if you want to write on Macbeth as a ruler, you can't write an introduction on Shakespeare. So we can't say that Shakespeare was born in, let's say, 1565 or 64. He died in 1616. He wrote 156 sonnets. He wrote 37 plays. Those plays are either tragedies or comedies or histories or romances. In Macbeth, he deals with the concept of the ruler. So this is not a good introduction. The introduction should be related to the issue of the ruler. Okay? And it should be related to the issue of the ruler in Macbeth. Okay? And at the end of the introduction, you write that. Shakespeare's view of the ruler in Macbeth is that the ruler should be a representative of God on earth. Yes. Or you can say that in Macbeth, Shakespeare upholds the Renaissance optimistic view of the ruler, a view that maintains that the ruler is God's image on earth. And in this case, you discuss Macbeth as a, uh, as a ruler. He is not an example of the optimistic view of the ruler. Macbeth is a ruler who reigns by force and cunning. So in this case, Macbeth, as a ruler, upholds the renaissance of pessimistic view of the ruler. And he approves of this type of ruler. That's why Macbeth is killed at the end. 
That's why Macbeth is replaced by Malcolm, and you have to elaborate on why Malcolm is coronated the king of Scotland. You have to elaborate on his virtues, on the fact that his wife is controlled by uh, the seven virtues of Christianity. He has never committed any of the seven deadly sins. And you may also refer to the fact that Duncan is a representative of the optimistic view of the ruler. So that's why the natural order has been shaken as a result of his death. And I mentioned this in the, in the Shakespeare course, right? Is it clear? So the introduction should be related to the text that you are going to analyze. Okay. Is it clear? Now after yes. you are done with after you are done with the introduction, you have to write the body. And the body, as you know, is divided into developmental or body paragraphs. We call them developmental paragraphs, i.e. we develop the topic in these paragraphs. Okay? At the beginning of each Doctor? body paragraph, you must, it is a binding obligation, at the beginning of each body paragraph, you must write a topic sentence. The topic sentence that you write at the beginning of the paragraph <coughs> is the main idea of the paragraph. Okay, so you write a main idea, then you elaborate on this main idea by giving examples by giving supporting details. Yes, the examples that you provide are called supporting details. Okay, so you may say, for example, uh, King Lear is a tragic hero who has a noble cause. His noble cause is to build a kingdom based on Christian values. Okay, so the fact that, or the idea that he wants to build a kingdom based on Christian values is not enough. You have to elaborate on this idea. So you can't write this main idea then. You write, let's say, a summary of the events. This is a plot. And unfortunately, many Shakespeare students write the main idea at the beginning of the paragraph or somewhere in the paragraph, then they write issues related to the plot, i.e. to the events that took place in the play. So this is not literature. So when you present a main idea, you have to support it with more analysis. Okay? So, King Lear wants to create a kingdom built on Christian values. Okay, so he wants his kingdom to be controlled by love, pity, sympathy, and care. These are Christian values that King Lear believes in. So that's why he abases the division of the kingdom on how much each of his daughters loves him. So the theme of love at the symbolic level reflects one of the Christian values that King Lear believes in. And this is how you present supporting details. Okay? So you may refer to the events, but briefly. Okay? So in a literature course, you don't have to mention the plot only i.e. the events that take place, you have to analyze the events that you present to support your own main ideas, okay? 
So a paragraph. Yes. 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 Okay. So a, pa a developmental paragraph is made up of a topic sentence that is written at the very beginning and supporting details. So in this case, you may have no supporting details, and the no supporting details are followed by secondary supporting details. Okay, so when you are done with your with the body of your essay, you have to write the conclusion. In the conclusion, you have to summarize the main points of your essay. Okay, you have to summarize the main points, i.e. the main ideas of your essays. You don't have to give advice. You don't have to give a piece of recommendation. Okay, so I don't expect you to say in the conclusion that you advise any person to read Macbeth. It is not your duty to give a piece of advice to your reader. Nor is it your duty to give a recommendation to your reader. And you don't have to ask questions. Okay, so the conclusion that you write at the end of your research paper should be a summary of the main points of your research paper. And don't start a conclusion, let's say with, uh, in conclusion, at the end, Last but not least. With what? Doctor, doctor, with what? Don't start your conclusion with any of these expressions. Okay? So let your conclusion grow spontaneously out of your argument. So you have written the introduction. You have presented your own argument in detail. So at the end, the conclusion will spontaneously come out of your argument. So don't start, do not start your conclusion with any conclusion. At the end, last but not least, to conclude, don't use these expressions at all. Okay? This is what we ask our students to do in advanced English composition. And this course is supposed to be an advanced English composition course. Is it clear? Yes. Yes, yes, doctor. Okay, now when you write your essay, you don't have. Okay, uh, you don't have to introduce or to, you don't have to announce your thesis statement. Okay, so at the end of the introduction, you cannot say, I will discuss. The theme of the ruler in this essay. This is wrong. You are announcing your essay. You are, yes, you are announcing your thesis statement. You cannot say, in this essay, I will discuss the causes and effects of pollution. Don't announce, don't tell your reader directly that this is your thesis statement. Okay? So it is enough to say, Emigration from Lebanon is caused by war, poverty, and unemployment. You don't need to say, I will discuss the causes of emigration, which are war, poverty, and unemployment. This is the moral. Is it clear? 
Yes, it's clear, doctor. Yes. yes. Okay. And when you write your essay, don't address your reader. What does it mean? Don't address your reader. In other words, use the third person point of view. Okay. Don't don't address your reader. So it means that don't use you. Okay. So we can't say uh, when you read Macbeth, you realize that Macbeth is a villain. Okay. So this is what I mean by don't address your reader. So when you use the pronoun you in your essay, it means that you are addressing the, the reader. I am your audience. I am your reader. So the reader is the audience. You are listening to me. You are my audience. Okay? So when I explain a chapter, I address you because there is a certain kind of interaction between the teacher and the student. So that's why I use you when I give a lecture. Doctor, you mean by the readers, the audience who might be interested in reading the text? No, I'm saying that when you write an academic essay, you don't have to address the reader. I don't use you. Okay. Try to be a okay. Try to be objective. Okay? So, for example, uh, one of you may say the following. Okay? If you study hard, you're, you will pass the exam. So, it means that you are addressing your teacher. You are addressing the reader who is reading the essay. So, when you say, if you study hard, I may say to you, how do you know that I don't study hard? So this means that you are not objective. Excuse me, so, doctor. So instead of addressing the reader, saying, if you study hard, okay, you can say, for example, uh, if a student study hard, he will do well on the exam. This is what we mean by objectivity. Yes. Is it clear? Right? Okay. Is yes. the main reason to be Muslim successful? Doctor? Yes. Our time is up. Time's up. Okay, wait a minute. I'm going to conclude. You still have time. You are, your second class starts at 2, I think. No. 1.45. Okay. Anyway, so next time I will discuss the first chapter that you have in the book. Read it. In this chapter, we come across three types of point of view. The objective point of view, the subjective point of view, and the you point of view, I will discuss the differences between these three points of view, and I will show you which one you have to use when you write your essays and your research papers. So read that chapter, and we, okay. we will meet next time. Do you have any question before I dismiss the class? On which page, please?